Photographer.com, and I just wanted to take you guys through my new workflow in Capture 110. So, for a little while now, I've actually not been using Adobe Lightroom. Um, I'm just kind of sick of a couple of things, like it being so slow. So, instead, what I've been doing is I've just been working and editing images through Capture One Pro 10. Um, I really, really like the Capture One Pro 10. It just makes a lot more sense for the way that I edit and just a lot of the qualms that I've had with Adobe Lightroom for a while now. So when you import, importing images is kind of the same way. You have a catalog system over here, but what Capture One kind of does by default is it opens up recent imports. So you basically have to go through and you have to look and you have to say, hey, okay, so these were all imported. Uh, maybe these are what you want to work on but that's not actually what i want to work on i tend to really like the folders instead so i'm going to say okay so this is from my let's see hard drive connected there um i'm going to want to edit that and i'll go through and now i'll go ahead and i'll edit that stuff and usually that tends to work out a lot better overall um, it's just kind of like Lightroom. It's easier. It makes sense, um, depending on the type of shooter that you are. And when I'm going through, what I'll do is see these right down here, right over here. See how that's green, and that's green, but that one's red. What I'll do is I'll say, hey, the ones I don't like, I'll sort as red, and the ones I like, I'll actually sort as green. So we'll go through and I'll do certain things. That's actually not a bad JPEG. But let me see what I can do with a RAW. Same thing right there. Um, let's, let's set that to green. And when I'm all done, I'll sort through and I'll say, okay, so these were kind of my rejects over here. But then these, not yellow, green were actually the ones that I really wanted to work with. So... Now I've got kind of the batch of images that I want to work with, and notice how it's down to 19 from, what was it originally? Let's say 10? No. No way. Let's go back over there. Anyway, I just lost it. Don't worry about that. So right now, in this batch, I have uh, 14 images, but the ones, okay, 13. So that means that I shot something that I actually really liked in most images, which I usually tend to do anyway. So as I go in and I move on to edit, what I usually do is this exposure evaluation area I usually ignore just because of the fact that it's mostly set up for if you're shooting tethered or not. I don't usually shoot tethered. Lens correction, though, is something I do indeed go into. Um, this was shoot, shot on Fujifilm and they don't really have anything majorly for Fujifilm in terms of lens profiles. So let's take a look at something else then in that case. Let's go to, I believe these were all shot with Sony cameras. Yeah, they were. So ARW down there. And now it tells you that this was shot with the Sony 24-70 F2. And then you can go in, you could say, I want diffraction correction done right there. I want to do some uh, purple fringing correction. I want to do some keystone adjustment. Keystone adjustment, um, this is not really in Lightroom. That was something that was more in, uh, what's the name of that program? Um, DxO, Mark? Yeah, DxO. It was more in there. Um, but it, it basically does more or less the same exact thing in terms of distortion correction. And then you can also do things like cropping and vignetting control and all that. It's here, look how much vignetting. It's not as much vignetting as you may get creatively in, in Lightroom, but it's still there in case you want to do that. In addition to that too, if you want to crop, you can set up a tool up here to do that, and you can just crop whenever you want to. I really don't want to crop that way, so I'm going to go back to this and cool whatever so now uh i have that set up and what i typically tend to do is i go in 
and I'll choose an entire batch from a session. So for example, these images of the RX100 Mark V are all very similar. So I'll select one. And what I'll do is I'll look at the histogram. And this was shot with a flash over a camera left. And I'll select daylight because of the fact that that's just the way that flash is balanced. Then I'll go in and this is pretty interesting actually. You can kind of split things very accordingly here. So your shadows, you could say, hey, I want those to be a little bit more purple, or I want those to be warmer, or I want this to be more green, etc., uh, etc. Et and then you could set it to be kind of normal, which is what most people will probably do. And then you could set the highlights to be a little bit more green, or purple, or what have you. And then what you can do is using this over here, you can say, hey, I want the shadows darker, but I want the highlights brighter, and I want the midtones to pop a bit more. And that's how you get a little bit more pop in your image. Then, when you're going through, you can say, hey, I want to work in selective color channels. So I'm going to say, okay, I only want to work with this channel, and now you see how everything else is grayed out, but then the door over there just becomes brown and associated with the red channel. So this is what happens when you choose to make the channel wider or smaller in the color gamut. Notice how less of the scene overall just becomes brown. And now I could say, hey, I want to really fine tune just that area. And now I can make it more saturated. But then when I move to the other channel, notice how now it's really working with the table and that. So what I could do is I could say something like, hey, let's go over there. No, but now I lose control over the table. But if I do this, what happens? Now I have more selective, finer control over the table, and I have a little bit of the door. So let's saturate that. I don't know if I want it that saturated, though. And then you can fine-tune the smoothness within the channel as it bleeds into another, and you can kind of see that over here. And then you can see green, there's very little in the channel, although it is present. Blue, there is some of that right there. It's kind of coming off onto there. Now what if I don't want the camera to really be blue? Then I can think to myself, I could say, hey, let me desaturate that. And let me make that lighter. And then I can see the purples. Purple is associated with the little Zeiss logo over there. I could say, okay, cool. And then a deeper magenta. There's nothing really like that in the scene. So now I go here, and now I've got the entire scene. And I have mostly really gotten the colors to exactly where I want them to be. Then I can say un, uh, unselect view, selected only color scheme. Color range, rather. And then what I tend to do at this point is I go in, and everything that is selected... I will say adjustments, I will say copy and apply adjustments, and I will make sure the parameters that I want are selected, and then I'll apply them. And now everything basically gets synced, and they all look very similar to one another now. So now what I can do is I can go in and I can say, okay, so let me go in, and these are my basic adjustments, but these aren't really everything that I want to each of these photos. So now I can go in and I can go to uh, this over here is called uh, the exposure panel. There are a lot more panels over here, by the way, um, which make a lot more sense in Lightroom. There's just everything in the develop panel. But here you basically really have to sit there and like think about each specific parameter that you want to fine tune. So now I'm saying to myself, OK, this is a little too contrasty. I mean, look at the highlights over here. So maybe I want to bring those highlights back just a tad. And let's see what happens. Mm, yeah, that's not bad. What if I up the contrast? I lower the contrast? Yeah, maybe that'll work. And then I'll lower the brightness just a bit, and then I can punch, add some punch over here. There's different types of clarity, which is really cool. And uh, if you use Instagram a lot, then you'll notice structure over here, which is, uh, it does something very similar. And then you have your levels over here, which I barely ever use, and you have your curves over here, which you, I also barely ever use. But then, let's say you want to make sure that something is 100% sharp, you can select a loop, which uh, was very popular during the film days, and you can say, okay, that's sharp enough, that's sharp enough, 
and that's sharp enough. You know, it's a product image, no one's gonna sit there and really pixel peep a product image. So um, now I go in and I say, hey, sharpen that just a bit, sharpen that, and now I get more detail. And then I can say, okay, fine, so I like that image. I can move on to another image in the set, and I can do this all accordingly to each one. Then I can say, hey, where are you? Process recipe. I want this to be selected with a watermark of some sort. And then I'd usually typically just go ahead and I'd export. But let me show you something else that's really cool for those of you that used presets in Lightroom, which uh, many of you readers didn't really like using them to begin with. But over the years, it seems like a lot of you have kind of warmed up to them. Uh, presets can be amazing. Um, especially if you're like a wedding photographer or something like that, and you just have a lot of images that you really want to get through. So, for example, uh, let's say I want to work with this session with Amanda, and let's say I want to work with just these 10 images over here. Well, not even 10, I'm sorry, 6 images. You can go in and you can say Adjustments and then Styles, and then you can select from Built-in Styles, and unfortunately, this does not give you the built-in camera profiles that something like Lightroom would. So if you're uh, editing like a, a Fujifilm file, for example, you're not going to be able to find Acros in here or Velvia or Provia or anything else like that. But you're going to be able to work with uh, Capture Ones, and they're actually pretty nice overall. But you, you warm up to them, I'm not going to lie. So right now I'm going to say, okay, I want to work with maybe this creative style. I kind of like that. Mm, do I want to work with that, though? I don't really think so. Let's work with this instead. Okay, so now I've got some really nice colors there. And now I can say, hey, I want this set to daylight white balance. Go in, and I do that. And then I can say, uh, let's mute the shadows a bit more. And let's push the highlights and let's push the midtones even more and now let's increase the exposure of the area just a bit overall and uh, let's add a very tiny bit of punch and cool now I've got mostly what I want is she sharp I believe she's sharp this is the Sigma 85 1.4 the new one yeah she's crazy sharp okay cool now I say copy and apply adjustments, and this will once again apply just these adjustments to every single image in the session. And now you see all of those images have changed, and it works out pretty well. And now let's say that you want to selectively brighten a certain area. So you go to local adjustments, and then typically what you can do is you could say, I'm going to create a new layer. So I create a new layer, and what I do is I draw a mask, and usually what I'll do to make this easier is I'll zoom in on a specific area, and then I'll say, hey, let's do this, and now I say, hey, let's go back to drawing the mask, and let's do here very carefully, and let's do there very carefully, and I don't even think, yeah, that came on, okay, cool. Now let's increase the exposure on her eyes. That's too much, obviously, but I just wanted to show you guys the effects of what's possible here. So now I've done that, and that works pretty well. And I'm able to just get it done fairly simply and easily. And then you could also do things like cloning an area out just by creating like a new clone layer specifically, or a new heel layer specifically. And yeah, that's that's really about it. That's really all that I typically ever need to do in Lightroom. I'm, I don't need to clone things out very often, but when I do, it's really uh, easy to do. There's also spot removal somewhere over here. Oh yeah, it's in, uh, which one is this called again? This is called the details panel. Spot removal can easily just be done there, but then cloning an area out is a little bit more intensive, but it's simple enough to do once you figure out just how simple it is overall. And that's really about it. That's really everything that I typically tend to do in 
this program. Um, sometimes I may go in and I may say, hey, I really don't really like those colors, so maybe I will desaturate the hell out of that channel. But no, maybe I shouldn't. That makes no sense. Let's do this. That looks pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. Now that's the purplish area. I kind of like the purplish area. Maybe make it a little brighter. And then that's really about it. And then I say, okay, fine. Now I'm not just working that area. I, I create an image that looks really nice. And I think that it's teaching me to do this a little bit more carefully than I am in Lightroom. And I really just like the colors that I get more here. If I don't want to work with a preset, then I can just go in and I can work with something else. Let me uh, choose another session of some sort. These are all... that's film. I can't really work with that right now. I'm not going to work with that. Uh, A99... Where are those images of Beck? Whatever, I'll work with Lulu. So let's say these... Oh no, these aren't the images that I want. Oh, here we go. So now, working with images of Lulu. Good lord. Um, so now here, and I'm saying, okay, I want to work with her skin tones. So I can say, okay, so I'm going into uh, the color editor, and there's this little thing over here uh, that lets you pick skin tones, and you define the skin tones accordingly, and you say it's between there and there, and now see how the range kind of increases, and then it will work with just that range. And then you say, hey, brighter or darker or something like that. And then you kind of adjust accordingly. And that's really about it for the most part. You can say advanced for certain color channels, but there's no real reason to. And uh, yeah, then you go through and you edit and you make your changes that you like. Now I've saturated her skin quite a bit. It looks more like Kodak uh, Ektar more than anything else. Actually, no, more than that. It looks like Velvia. Ektar is actually a little bit less saturated than that. So you go through and you say, hey, I'm going to work with this channel. And you just continue to do it. It's a different mentality and workflow. But it really just kind of keeps your mind into specific things. Like, hey, I'm going to just worry about the colors right now. And then, hey, I'm just going to worry about the specifics of the exposures right now. And fixing those. I just want to focus on the lens profiles right now. So, you figure that out. Um, this was shot with a newer Sigma 85, and they don't really have a profile with that yet. But you can go in and you can select a number of them otherwise. And that's really about it. That's everything that I do in Adobe, sorry, no, not Adobe, in Capture One, but it is mostly everything that I do in Adobe Lightroom, and um, brought over to Capture One. I like this a lot more. Uh, what works for me, though, may not work for you, as Lulu is kind of trying to tell you right here, so just keep that in mind. All right, then. All right everyone, thanks a lot, appreciate your time, and uh, have a good one.